So with what looks to be the final game in the Metal Gear Solid line directed by Hideo Kojima, why don't we take a nice look back at the entire saga and see where the series all began. Metal Gear. Now just keep this in mind, I'm reviewing the original Japanese MSX version from 1987 from the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection, not the NES version. Apparently that's a completely separate affair that has different level designs, different mechanics, and stuff like that. I'm reviewing the one that Kojima made himself back in 87 when this was originally made. Now with that said, let's figure out what the story is. Now the story of Metal Gear 1 is actually really simple. You follow Solid Snake who enters a remote base location, who has two objectives in order to go through this mission, and those two missions are locate the lost Foxhound member Grey Fox, and then locate the walking nuclear tank of destruction known as Metal Gear. Now this may come as a shock to some people, but I've actually never played the entire Metal Gear Solid series all the way through. I've only played 4 completely all the way through. I have played Revenges, but just speaking in terms of Metal Gear Solid games, I've only played the 4th one. So with that in mind, I was actually able to follow 4's storyline pretty well. I didn't feel confused, I didn't feel lost or anything like that. I was able to keep up with it for pretty much the whole affair, and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Despite the fact that this game is from 1987, it's actually not that bad. It actually holds up relatively well for the most part, despite a couple of just potential issues, but we'll get to that later. Let's start with the positives for this thing. One thing, the level design. The level design of this game is really, really well done. The best thing I could probably describe it as is it reminded me of a sensation of Bloodborne. Whenever I played through Bloodborne, I found out it was really cool when I found a new passageway and I found a new way to get around the environment, but it interconnected with something that I had previously been to, so that way it made it easier to go back and forward from my destinations to another place I needed to go. Metal Gear had a similar feeling to where I was like, okay, I'm in this one particular room, but I need to know exactly how to get there. And I never at one point felt completely lost, saying like, I have no idea where to go. Every environment and every room I was in and try to sneak around was different enough to where I could remember it and figure out every location I needed to go and say, I need to go with this door, I need to go to this location, I need to go find this person, and I just need to keep exploring until I find the objective I need to do. And every time I was able to discover something new, it allowed me to look back on old areas and say, oh, that's how they're all connected. It makes it feel like it's an actual place. Another thing I can mention about this game is its music. The soundtrack itself may be limited, but each theme, when you hear it, it's all very distinct and memorable. I can still the theme in my head while I was on alert and trying to basically hide from the guards, and I was still feeling that white knuckle tension of saying, do not get caught. Whatever you do, do not get caught, because otherwise there are going to be guards coming after my ass. Another thing I can mention about a positive for this game is its story. Now, let me be clear, this is the simplest story that I saw regarding a Metal Gear storyline, but it's still very effective. Sometimes there is beauty in simplicity. You don't need this super over-convoluted, super complicated premise in order to make a game good. And so, for the time, it would have been probably very impressive for people who are playing these games at the time, who were just like running, gun, shoot everything with pretty much no thought or care whatsoever. But having a sense of context in this world, probably more so than other games at this time would have had, having that sense of like, okay, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how is it going to affect others. And not only that, but you also hear from people on your transmitter of how maybe they have a personal stake in this conflict. Having moments like that just makes it feel like, okay, it's not just an isolated incident that affects only you. It affects other people around you, and that is really effective. Now, sometimes art styles and actual resolutions and how things are rendered and look aesthetically don't age that well. However, Metal Gear doesn't suffer this problem because the art style and the aesthetic that they have for the game works pretty well. It has a very ageless look to it. Now, obviously you can tell it's from the 80s, but it's not hideous to look at. It's one where you think like, okay, you know exactly who your character is, there's nothing confusing about the aesthetics and the overall design of everything, you know what everything is, you know who the bad guys are, you know where the environment is, you know where you are in the context of the entire world and the game that you're playing in, and so everything just works very seamlessly, and when you move from screen to screen, it's all very quick, there's li literally no difference whenever you go from one room to the next. And so having that consistent art aesthetic just makes everything easier to process, and it all works pretty well. However, there is one small problem when it comes to this game. 
And that's its gameplay. Now, before anyone starts jumping on the bandwagon and says I'm criticizing the gameplay, let me make this clear. Metal Gear, as a stealth game, works just fine. It works very, very well. I understand it is supposed to be the granddaddy of the genre. The whole idea of sneaking into a base, making sure you're undetected, and that concept in itself works pretty well, for the most part. However, there are certain instances in this game where having going undetected is kind of an impossibility and is very tempted to just throw caution to the wind and just not care anymore. Here's where I'm getting at to this point. During the course of maybe a few segments in the game, there are times when you are very easily detectable, and there's points where you are going to be detected all the time. Now, if the whole point of being a stealth game is to be able to sneak into somewhere and make sure that you remain undetectable to everyone, and the whole point of the game is to make sure you feel that sense of like, okay, I am so slick and smooth with my actions, and I can just go in from point A to point B without anyone noticing me and get my mission done to not even know that I'm there, that's the point of a stealth game, and what Metal Gear was supposed to be founding back when it was originally released. However, there are certain points, like I mentioned before, where you become very clearly visible and detectable throughout the entire time. So, this goes from a stealth game to another action game. Now, I understand that, like it says on the box of Metal Gear Legacy Collection, is tactical espionage action. I understand that. So the point of Metal Gear, and I assume that a lot of people would agree with me on this one, is that it's stealth first, action later. So with that in mind, there's another mechanic that pops up, and it just becomes potentially easily to abuse. Here's what I'm getting at. In the course of the game, you come across several weapons, such as a pistol, a grenade launcher, machine gun, submachine gun, and a rocket launcher. Which, by the way, the rocket launcher is awesome. And so, having those weapons there, having this humongous arsenal at your disposal to switch out at any time, not to mention having stockpiles of ammunition that you could just respawn over and over and over again, and just exit a room, go back in, boom, ammo is right there, or rations or something like that. Having those mechanics in the game, yes, makes it easier, but it also becomes more easy to abuse. The best way I can kind of describe it is, for those who complain about the modern Resident Evil games, one of the common complaints I've heard is that it does not feel like a survival horror title, it feels more like an action title. Which, to the credit, it sounds very valid, because of the fact that it relies more on action sequences, you have more ammo given to you, and it defeats the purpose of survival horror, which is to point to scare you. This is having a similar effect back here. Whereas Metal Gear, it still works fine as an overall stealth game, except these little bits and mechanics that add a little bit of convenience to the player hinder the stealth mechanic at a cost of making it more convenient. Because by the time I was done, I had like 300 bullets in my gun. I understand this may sound a little bit confusing, but basically it boils down to this. Having more convenient assets for the player does not necessarily mean a more polished game. Sometimes you have to inconvenience the player just so that way you've perfectly polished your concept to perfection. So with all that in mind, I'm going to have to say that Metal Gear 1 is absolutely worth playing, but not perfect. So there you go, folks. That is my review of Metal Gear. I hope you enjoyed this. Now tell me, what is your personal favorite Metal Gear game? Or if you want to actually talk about Metal Gear characters, who's your favorite Metal Gear character? But please do not explain why if there are spoilers involved. Please, for anyone else who's not played this, because I want them to have a similar experience that I did going through this thing spoiler-free and just playing it through the first time with blind eyes. So there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'm Perry the Warner Legend, and I will see you later.